Yeah, no, it's uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the arts too, Bam, because uh, one of the, one of the things that I also found interesting about the uh, paper, uh, it's gonna be a recurring thing. I found a lot of stuff interesting. That's why we have uh, you on the show. Uh, um, how do I put this? I guess there is a uh, there seems to be kind of a disconnect, and I, I you touch on this kind of uh, on the on the fringes a little bit. Uh, there seems to be a disconnect even between the STEM field and esports. I I think there's sort of like this misconception that video games are on computers. So this is a, you know, a way for a university to showcase it's uh it's computer programming or computer science or engineering program or something like that. When in reality, a lot of what esports are just video games and competing and all the auxiliary and periphery roles that are involved in community making those lie in disciplines well outside of the uh, STEM field. Uh, you know, you and I were, before the show talking about political stuff uh so there's a, a political science bent to it there's sociology uh as you know for your study uh it almost seems like there's um an opportunity to actually nexus a lot of other disciplines and therefore other you know subjects in other schools like communications is the one that you uh, suggest uh for for esports uh which you know might shift the way that people people view it so in terms of how to kind of parse through this, you mentioned that there are some negative impacts from it being so reliant on STEM as like a recruiting tool or a, a showcasing tool, um, especially on the the demographics uh, and the uh, sociologic, you know, the socioeconomic backgrounds of uh, people. Did you might want to talk about how that is, you know, how it being so rooted in STEM might have some downstream effects that negatively impact the um, diversity of the player field in college esports. For sure. So, like you said, um, sorry. Let me scroll to the question. I have them pulled up. That's what I'm looking at. Basically, I have a yeah. better articulate answer for oh, this. Oh, yeah, just I'm not going in order on the questions. This stuff. I'm like, you know, as as we talk, it when organically things come up, I'm going to pull the pull the trigger on things. So this so, is kind of a this might have been a more organic one. But um, um, I think it was that you mentioned uh, how esports is tied to STEM. And so that is true. But yeah. what that means, like you also said, is we're talking about computer science. We're not talking about biology. You know what I mean? When we say STEM, like there is increasing diversity and in gender in STEM, but it's not in computer science, which is the aspect of STEM that esports is like tied to, basically. Uh, Computer science is still ridiculously white male dominated, uh, Asian male being the next highest like demographic, but it's like way closer to the others than to white male, basically, as far as representation. Uh, so it's, it's like the entire reason actually for the problem kind of is that esports is like seen as male and then that reproduces the culture of that being true, basically. Uh, and then we see computer and STEM also have that culture. And then sports in general, especially at college, also have huge gender disparities and always have. So kind of like, I saw it was like, I'm, I was surprised that people expected to find anything different in this study, but there was a ton of optimism. And the reason there was so much optimism was because of Title IX. Like, I don't know if that's a common knowledge thing, but that's basically like the law that says everything has to be equal for everyone at universities. And that typically gets applied to like sports, like traditional sports. And so like that clearly relates to esports too, but it also relates to everything at the university. It doesn't just cover sports. So this has nothing to do with like our esports, traditional sports, do they count type thing. They should be included and like covered by Title IX, but we're just kind of not seeing that be happening or we're seeing like, oh, women can try out for the team. Diamond too, by the way, to even try out, but women can try out. Like that's, yeah. So it's like exclusionary via barriers like that. Um, mm -hmm. I guess. No, absolutely. I mean, and I definitely agree with that, man. Because I mean, even when you go, when you look at it, right, at the, like the base level, as people are kind of growing up and getting to a point where they can get skills, right? You know, a lot of it starts from a grassroots uh, organic space. And when you have the places where a lot of us will go and train and like learn, right? Like, um, you know, certain games, of course, like Smash, like you go to a house or, or like, okay, you go to a tournament and then from tournament you level up, right? Or if you're talking about um, like CSGO or anything like that, like, you know, you're going to a PC Bong or the PC Cafe, Land Center, whatever, you know, from there, right? But it's like, 
even the environment in there, like you said, is so like white male dominated for the most part, right? And um, just overall male dominated for a lot of women to go in there, you know, you have an issue of like whether it be harassment or being neglected or just automatically soon to be inferior, you know, once they come to that place, you know, not looked at as someone who is just new trying to start, but due to their gender, they are inferior, right? Which is ridiculous when you think about it because we all started somewhere right we all we all played smash and thought we were the best in the world and then we played people and got bodied right like we all know that story but for some reason it's always attributed to women like to their gender when they start off and it's like they get pushed aside and no one tries to help and mentors or anything like that and because of that they don't get to the point where you go to these programs now you know, fast forward to these programs, like, oh, well, the barrier is this, and you have to do that, and in a certain sense, those barriers make sense, but in other ways, it's like, there's just, there's been nothing to allow growth for a lot of these players to get to where they need to be, to even be considered for these opportunities in the right way. I'm, I'm really glad to hear everything you guys have had to say. I've watched some of the recordings, too. I'm glad that people with a lot more, like, clout in this community are thinking about these issues. Like, no, it's uh, uh yeah. Go ahead. All I had to say on that. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think um, one of the thing I I kind of getting at this uh, you know, this this phenomenon or uh, you know, there's just this kind of a negative cycle, I guess. How do we how do we create um an environment in your opinion that we can sort of solve this issue just because um you know. I, I think the idea of tokenism on a team is problematic, and I think you say that as well in your study. But simultaneously, these programs have this very intense pressure to win, uh, like you're also saying, which creates uh, that this that toxic meritocracy situation that ultimately creates the threshold for which even accessibility is out of reach for uh, so many people. Is there uh, is this something that you know um that there's an answer to that we can that we can start trying to implement as a community or is there something that uh um you know that might just be out of reach and it's a cultural problem that's downstream of so many other things that there's nothing that we can really do <laughs> it's really, all over it's only like an attempt being made actually um <laughs> uh, having smash sisters as a thing that exists is pretty unique in esports honestly like having any sort of dedicated tournament space for people that aren't in the hegemonic like subject position or whatever, uh, the dominant position, like uh, that's super important. So that is what they think, like what a meaning people who have studied that in particular, that meaning Morgan Romine, who you guys may be familiar with being very like UCI based. She is, uh, she has a PhD from UCI in cultural anthropology. She is one of the founders of any key, which mm -hmm. is like the, organization that put out the white paper that we based this on and they're like smash sisters isn't any key affiliate so is uh is it i don't know if it's nasf how you pronounce it the people that you're gonna have on after this uh, they're in any key yeah north americans classic well. esports federation yeah they they're also an affiliate of the organization that she started basically uh and she thinks that segregated gaming events for people of like marginalized subject positions are the way to go right now i feel like that's really like it feels dirty and scary to say for me especially as like a white man but that's what they think and it has worked basically so far like there's like video evidence of this working like there's after school clubs of girls playing games right in this like girls only space uh then the boys keep asking to be able to be allowed into the space because video games or whatever, uh, it's in their school library and they're like middle schoolers or whatever. And then they finally do get let in. And then there's just a complete like mansplaining and like unsolicited advice. So, um, they talked about the, the lack of advice or the lack of respect that people receive. I think something that's annoying is people get this unsolicited advice and unsolicited oh, absolutely. Too, you know absolutely i, I mean <laughs> everybody's this, an expert all of a sudden <laughs> right right i mean I, I think it's it's a very twofold thing right where um and this actually leads to me because this is something that has been very much on my mind for um a very long time in esports and in gaming in general um right now currently 
um, part of the work I'm doing, like, you know, trying to help support EXO Academy, right? Um, and EXO Academy, that's ran by Persia, uh, she's been always, like, solid in FGC and done a lot of great things. And in particular, EXO Academy has really been about getting a lot of people who are, ex like, true experts at their craft. Um, the recent season that she just did, she actually had um, two Tekken players. She had uh, Athena, who was an aspiring uh, Tekken player, um, she had just great potential, and then she had uh, Cuddlecore, who right now is like one of the top players in Tekken, like overall, like just a very strong woman, and they're both black women, right? And so she came in from the mentorship role, Cuddlecore, and then of course um, Athena there being the uh, mentee, and it was a very beautiful thing to watch, you know. Um, and we're like cutting up like some some tape on that, and we want to make something, um, we want to put that out there in the ether so people can see that and check that out. Um, but I, I agree to your point. Like, yeah, there's too much um, unsolicited advice for people. However, I do think those tools are important. I think that we see that for everyone. Like those, like having a mentor, having people, a group where you can learn and be guided and stuff, right? Because you know, how else are you going to even learn? But it has to be in the right way. And I think that's probably what some of these groups do, right? And why like Smash Sisters work so effectively. Um, you know, a good friend of mine, Sid, works like really hard in smash sisters as well too and she helps a lot now with a lot of the um the general um like project management and stuff like that right now as of late um but like again a lot of it is because they're in that space you're all with all women and because they are all with women who like you're gonna have some women who are gonna be better and we're gonna be worse but they can talk to people and ask questions and connect and get that like that camaraderie which we all seek and all love and why we come together and play video games in the first place right without the all these extra things and the gender disparity and all this like nonsense that like comes in like you said and the mansplaining and everything like that so i think that it's important to have like both those things there and i think initially it's you have to put it in a proper space where you don't even need to deal with that other aspect yet, right? Get people to a level where they can be okay and be comfortable in going to tournaments and, and knowing they have this space, right? Yeah. Instead of like, oh, well, you know, fend for yourself. Like, you know, have a billion Joe 212, like, come out to you mm -hmm. and, and explain to you what a forward smash is, even though you, like, he got went oath <laughs> two in bracket, right? <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. it's just like <laughs> those kind of things that, like, it just has to happen. Yeah, it's like, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, like these definitely, these events are stressed to be like supplemental to the main event, you know, it wouldn't be like a hmm. separate thing forever, you know? Yeah. And uh, sure. on this note as well, Morgan Romine's start was on this all-female uh, Counter-Strike team back in the day that was sponsored by Ubisoft hmm. called Frag Dolls. Uh, I've only heard of them in like the history of whatever I've learned right. and stuff. But yeah, uh, so she's like very much a player and a uh, scholar as far as esports goes. Yeah. Basically, the recommendation coming from her holds that much more weight, is all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, sure. I think it's, like, also pretty, like, it makes sense because that sort of segregation or whatever you want to call it is present in almost every major, you know, physical sport. Uh, like tennis, for example, you know, it, it's separate between men and women. It's been proven to be very successful, you know? I mean, I guess you don't have the alternative scene as much like you do in Smash, um, where it isn't like that as often, but... I think, you know, some of it goes to the natural, you know, I issues with interactions between male and females in, in certain ways, some of which we can work uh, through as a society, I think, um, but some of which I think is just kind of inherent and maybe isn't the best for, you know, fostering growth in communities like that. So I think it's really effective to have that kind of, uh, you know, that, that separation in specific areas like that but then the community as a whole is still united so they can still interact with you know uh male smash players tournaments are still you know uh, you know by gender whatever you want to call it you can be any gender and, and enter a tournament so yeah. i think it just allows them to grow in a in a space that is more welcoming and you know if they want to go out into the other areas that's where we can both improve you know male and female at, at getting better at right. interacting so it's kind of the best of both worlds gotcha no, yeah, I agree uh, that, uh, you know, kind of modeling. Yeah, you gotta translate, uh, man. This, is, gotta, yeah. <laughs> this is me translating. So I agree with Cosmos that this, uh, the you know, the, the analogy of uh, other sports and how there's, like, men's division and women's divisions when they play um, it is good, but there's actually a better opportunity in, uh, in esports because uh, you can u utilize these, uh, you know, specialized uh, 
um, programs that are specifically for a uh, minority demographic, especially women for esports, uh, as kind of a launching pad to get them into this, you know, integrate them more into the scene on a on a broader level. Um, you know, that's uh, it's it's definitely part of a uh, part of the solution. Well, I've been